right, it's beautiful, beautiful Friday here. Um, I wanted to just show this for one second. Ouch. It's all our, we got our three quarter inch, two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch, uh, three inch back there. And then those are some extra reels. Uh, we just got all this in not too long ago, I guess. Um, but we are super duper scaling and there it is boys and girls we uh, finally got an upgrade right uh, back up in the pot today we're getting all this stuff cleaned up everybody I know um, well not there's been a handful of people this was my uh, do not touch <laughs> 12, 13, or 14, you've been warned. Uh, that is trash now because uh, I don't know what's wrong with those circuits, but um, this is a live, live panel. But they, um, we just uh, just capped them off. We don't need those circuits. I don't know where they go. Don't really care. Uh, and uh, now these these breakers don't do uh, hurt people. So. Um, we're going to be putting in a 30 amp circuit um, coming out of here. We're going to go bam, bam to bam. Uh, hook our 30 amp to this uh, charge controller. Then AC out of this is going to go up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where yet, but it's going to go to this six circuit uh, square D QO panel. And we are running 120 volts uh, on this particular charge controller. So what we do is we come into the line we daisy chain line A to line B, and that way all six uh, circuits will work. What I'm thinking is we'll probably just put this right over here, something like that, and then this is just gonna go down to a twist lock receptacle for circuit number one. Uh, we missed a few parts, and um, Seth's gonna grab that. Uh, the other thing coming down here is our battery terminal. Uh, we come out of this, we're going to drop down right here on the floor is where we're going to put our four um, uh, 58 amp hour batteries to make a 48 volt system. Uh, we've got our four uh, 200 watt uh, panels. Each one of these panels uh, we're going to hook together to make 48 volt. We've got all our brackets on. Uh, Seth, this morning before I got here, this ladder is slightly sketched, but we'll see. Um, went ahead and he painted this, oop, don't touch anything. Actually, he might be able okay to touch it now. Oop, don't touch it. It's still a little tacky. Um, but this is a, uh, a uh, rubber um, membrane, and unfortunately, Kirk's calling me. All right. Uh, still working on this. Um, we've been pulled away to do other stuff. And <coughs> got a nice scenic uh, backdrop. This is a 12 unit um, complex here. And we are still working on the 115 units, 117 units. Um, and I'll show you how we are finishing this up. Uh, we've got our 12 uh, pre-made uh, drop cables that go to every unit. Uh, and what we are going to be using here is a 1x12 that's perfectly balanced for the 12 units. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set that up here in the tray. Just like so. And pretty much what we do uh, with the splitter is I'm going to cut off my common here. And my common becomes the pigtail uh, that I ultimately use. So I cut the uh, common um, and uh, I go ahead and uh, splice straight to that and then that way uh, I have extra pigtails. So use these all the time but uh, not for this particular one. We're going to take this 12 count right here. I'm going to go ahead and strip off that little oh, hey now. Go ahead, we'll strip strip off that uh, tracer. There's a copper tracer right there. We'll go ahead and remove 
Uh, we'll go ahead and slit this jacket with the Joan Arch uh, slitter. Then we are going to access our fibers, go ahead and uh, bang out a quick splice, and then get on out of here. So I don't think any, uh, like a Verizon would not put a splitter this far out in the plant. Uh, well, for this particular complex, what we have is well, there's 14 buildings total. Um, we've got a 1x16 out on our um, Fosk out on the main road there, and we're splitting that to all 14 buildings. Each building comes in with about a negative, uh, oh hell, off the top of my head I don't uh, remember, but um, these are putting uh, about a 12, uh, negative 12 onto the plant, so the absolute worst customer so far that we've hooked up. I've only hooked up about 70 of them, and the worst uh, the worst one so far was negative uh, 20.5. 20 20.5 20 or 20.6, something like that. Um, so, honestly, that's probably uh, coming to my splitter here, and then it just so happens to be the last, you know, um, unit at the end, but uh, we'll go ahead and let's get... Um, We'll get cranking away here. This is my first gig using it, and um, got like splitters and got my my fosks. Um, got three nice tables that flip down. Um, right now, I'm just using the, just using the one, and uh, gorgeous, gorgeous day out. But I can stand up in it. Uh, I'm six five, and I can stand up with it. My hair just barely scrapes some places. Uh, it used to be an Amazon delivery van. You can see it right there. Yeah, boy. Um, it's a diesel. That's uh, a it's a 2018. Um, it's pretty damn nice. Not gonna lie. Uh, all things considered, uh, I've been using a um, uh, been not able to do shit really as fast as I should be able to do it. Um, because I'm using my personal vehicles all the time. So this is sweet, man. Uh, I got her, got my paper towels up here. Got these things, although they're okay. I don't, don't love them. But um, here, we're gonna be hooking up a customer that I prepped. Uh, I prepped this whew, two years ago and the customer's drop is finally installed. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get right in it. Cool. So, a uh, couple little snafus, but um, overall, uh, it's a pretty, pretty sweet uh, setup. I'm out here, uh, actually right by my house. Uh, huh? And I'm about halfway up that street there. And we're hooking up a customer that's about two miles, five miles that direction. Uh, based on how it runs, I guess. It's like maybe one and a half miles. But overall, this, uh, having, uh, having this is just so sweet. A um, few uh, snafus I gotta figure out is the doors lock at the speed of light. So uh, I locked myself out of it, and that was, a, that was rather embarrassing. Uh, but you know, it goes, it goes, if I explain it to you, you're not going to get it, but like, like even rate, I had to, I just rolled the windows down because I was getting so pissed off at it. Um, the second you walk away, I, okay, so you turn the vehicle off and you walk two steps towards the back door and the whole car, uh, the whole thing locks up and you can't unlock it. The back doors then with the key, once it does that, you can only unlock the front doors. Um, so yeah, it's some Amazon just bullshit that they put into these, but I've got to, I'm um, gonna get some Googling going on and uh, I counted it, it's five seconds. So the second that dr the driver's door closes, you have five seconds to get your shit together. Um, and if you left the key inside the car, you're fucked. Uh, just a terrible design. I, I don't understand, like, the Amazon driver's getting stranded all the time, it seems like. 
unless they leave a key in the car and they have a key in their pocket so they could do it faster. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is that um, if I leave the vehicle on and I get out of it and close the door, it turns off. Then five seconds you got it'll lock that bitch on you. So just that's just day it's day one and it took me three minutes to lock myself out, uh, which is pretty pretty embarrassing. Uh, and the other thing is the uh, Mercedes Sprinter van keys, the company that makes them, I guess they went out of business and uh, um, during COVID or something. So you can't even get another um, another key is what they're telling me until January. Now they do have spare keys that they're using in case you brick, they're calling it you bricked your van. But if I lose the only key, they will allow me to tow this back to the dealership and they'll give me one additional key at that point. But it's gonna cost thousands of dollars to reprogram it. Uh, so basically, um, uh, that's all gonna fall out if I touch it anymore. Um, I removed the clip and the clip is right here. I'll have to put that back in right there. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty much gonna be rocking this thing uh, windows down until January because that that I, thank God I was within a mile of my house I walked home and then called the I called a locksmith and then walked back to the to the van so uh, but here we are getting uh, building a pond for a um, it's a storage unit place but apparently there's eight businesses inside so um, we're gonna go ahead and put an eight way splitter in and call that call that that Hmm, excuse me, but uh, I've been kind of uh, bored, doing a lot of boring stuff, and just not really been motivated to, to film anything, uh, to be honest. So I'm gonna try to get back, uh, kind of back in the swing of things. All right, nice, nice beautiful day out here. We got our new splice splice rig all set up. The thing is pretty slick. Uh, Take a peek at this thing. <clears throat> so I keep hearing it. I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. Uh, it's Verizon and they're pumping uh, <clears throat> they're pumping air. There's an air compressor inside this box. You can actually kind of hear it making some noise. And this line going up, I'm, I'm pretty confident they're putting pressurized air in their copper lines. Um, it's not on right this second, but it's been turning on like every uh, 30 or 45 seconds. I don't really know what's going on. I, I'm guessing that the lines are, are so long that they're just trying to keep, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I know that there's in Salisbury here. This is the only one I've ever even seen. Uh, I wish it would turn on for me. It's loud enough that I can hear it from way over there inside. <clears throat> but you guys want to take a peek at this operation. It's pretty slick. Uh, it's about the rain and I'm so happy for it because um, I don't know. I'm not in a tent, I guess. Uh, here we're going to be doing a mid-slit on this 96 count uh, to hook up the shopping center across the street and uh, there's six, uh, there's 14 businesses in there so we're just basically bringing a pond into that building and just calling it that uh, and hopefully more than just one person signs up I guess but if you want a, a quick little tour here um, I got it almost about how I want it. I think I'm going to raise this table up. They do have adjustments, Seth uh, noticed. I'm gonna raise it up maybe five or six inches. Uh, but got the recycling can because it was $10 cheaper than a normal trash can. And uh, honestly, I kind of like the blue. Um, one really slick thing about this is I don't, just barely uh, touch my hair in here. Uh, but I've got this one um, 
if you don't uh, clamp these things to the wall, then you can't even think while you're driving. It makes so much damn noise. Uh, but patch panel or patch cables, and over here we just got some random uh, installation stuff. We got all our splice tubes. Uh, it's just a box full of splitters in various fashions. There's no splitter going in here. This is just going to be a uh, blue black to blue blue uh, lateral. But really, uh, it is starting to rain now too, so I better get, I better at least get inside. And I think that when it turns on again, I'll try to catch it too, because that's strange. And over here, there's a lot going on on this pole too, so. I don't know if it was a Verizon repair that needed to take place, but it looks old. I mean, it looks like that air compressor thing has been there since the pole was there. So I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Obviously air in the copper lines probably calls this, I mean, water in there probably calls the static. So for them to pump it out with air, I, I don't, I don't know. It seems like though, if the cable was nicked or damaged anywhere, it sort of defeats the purpose, but somebody smarter knows what they're doing, I guess. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and we'll get this thing prepped into a FOSC very quick.